you think this Mustang doesn't sound like a proper high-performance Mustang, well, that's because the motor is out of a Focus RS. Is this blasphemy? We review the 2.3-liter high-performance convertible to see if it's a worthy replacement for the Mustang GT. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. There was a time when the idea of a high-performance turbo engine in a Mustang would have been seen as abnormal. But here we are in 2020, and as you know, these are not normal times. This is the Mustang 2.3-liter high-performance EcoBoost convertible. For 2020, it adopts a lot of the Mustang GT's performance parts and ups the horsepower while still maintaining all the stuff that makes it one of the most popular convertibles in America. That begs the question, is the GT still even relevant? We'll get to that a bit later. The model we're testing today is a base trim convertible with a few extras, including the high performance pack. Prices you see it here, 42,770 US dollars, including destination. Let's get started with a look under the hood. Ford calls this the 2.3 liter high performance EcoBoost. It's an upgraded turbocharged four cylinder good for 332 horsepower and 350 pound feet of torque. That's 22 more ponies than the standard turbo with a broader power curve that should help with drivability. In our test car, it's connected to a six-speed manual transmission, pushing power to the rear wheels where it hooks up with a 3.55 ratio limited slip differential. A 10-speed automatic is optional. The convertible top is easy to use with a simple twist and button operation. As far as convertibles go, the trunk is practical with 11.4 cubic feet available, significantly more than the drop-top Camaro. Under the floor is a fix-a-flat kit with a compressor. Our tester also came standard with hood stripes, LED headlights, and high-performance 19-inch wheels with summer tires. Inside, it looks very similar to last year's model, with a multi-function steering wheel, mid-grade plastics, and some nice metals, plus fabric seats. Though there are upgraded seat options, these ones were pretty comfortable with six-way power adjustment. The extra gauges were included with the high-performance pack. One of the Mustang trademarks is the sound. So how does this turbo model compare to a proper V8? First, let's listen to the Ford Mustang Bullet, which we filmed last year. Now the 2.3-liter high-performance model. Which sound do you prefer? Post a comment below. The Mustang doesn't have a lot in the advanced safety department, but it does get a federally mandated rear camera and um, mirrors. Most of the development here went into the fun features, like adjustable steering feel and an assortment of dried modes, including the track pack apps, which we'll try shortly. For entertainment, it has Sync 3 on an 8-inch touchscreen display, which you can also use to control the dual-zone aircon. Plug in a mobile device for access to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Today, I'm thinking Def Leppard. With the music and drive mode sorted, let's head out and see how this model shapes up. You could say that this 2.3 liter high performance edition of the Mustang is like a baby GT. In fact, it gets many of its components from the GT. Everything from brakes to calipers to the brace up front, even the rear differential from the GT. Um, however, this one is of course a four cylinder. A GT is a proper V8 Mustang. Uh, this one, yeah, this is a motor from a Ford Focus RS of all things. And that kind of, even with the active exhaust, it still makes it kind of, I don't know, sound like an import. It doesn't sound like, you know, traditional American metal. And that takes some getting used to. Uh, that is, if you want to get used to it. If you don't, well, just plunk down the money and get yourself a GT. Now, the nice thing about a proper rear differential is you get really good launches. And thankfully, this has all the track apps that we know and love. Let's go ahead and stop it and try a zero to 60. 
Before we do a zero to 60, I think it's important that we warm up the tires. So how do you do that? Well, with the Mustang, it's super easy. All you have to do is a feature called line lock. Now, typically this is for drag racing only. However, if you find a quite enough of a street, you can totally use it. So to get to line lock enabled, I have to go to mode, drag strip, warns me that it's for track only. I then go to track apps, line lock, hold the button OK to initialize, hold it, initialization complete, to engage firmly, I'll probably break and hold. Engaged, OK. There we go, it's now applied and... And there we go. I think we need to get some air here. <coughs> Woo. Now that the tires are all warmed up, we can actually do a zero to 60 run with another feature. And that is called launch control because this is a turbo. So you want to get that turbo wound up uh, before you release all the power. So launch control, RPM, Okay, now let's see, how do I do launch control again? I had this problem last time too. So I think, oh, I just hold it down. Three, two, one, go. What? 40, 50, and 60. Oh, that's quick. You know, the, the thing about a Turbo 4 is it has totally different driving characteristics. So if you like that, you know, torque off the line, that meaty, throbby engine, then yeah, you want to go with a GT. However, if you want just great performance for the sake of performance at honestly a price that I think is great. I mean, this car as we're driving it is around $43,000, which if you compare it to even like a nicely equipped crossover, this is a bargain. The joke online is that the answer is always Miata. But what if you have a family of four? Well, the answer can't be Miata because you can only take two at a time. No, the answer in that case is Mustang convertible because you can fit an entire family of four in here and everybody can get that top-down driving experience. And I have to say, in the summertime, in the spring, it is just really one of the best experiences you can have on the road. And if it rains, of course, the top comes up in just a few seconds. Let's pretend like, oh no, it's raining. It's not really raining. Uh, we just stop the vehicle, we hold the button here, and three, two, one, negative one, negative two, negative three. Okay, that was about, you know, six or seven seconds. Really easy. Oh, it stopped raining. Let's put the top down. Put this, I always flip it the wrong way. Go like that, hold this button. One, two, three, four, five, six. Incredibly fast. If you want to compare like the current Mustang versus the Camaro, I'd have to say that my preference leans towards the Mustang. Both are fantastic driving machines and both are a good value for the dollar. But when you come down to it, I just prefer the Mustang style and design. And that's because, you know, it's nostalgic, but it's not absolutely smothered in it. It's a reasonable amount of nostalgia, you know, mixed in with a lot of cool high tech. I mean, all the track apps, fantastic. This like throwback brushed aluminum is just so cool. Just the overall design, it's, it's high performance, but it's not beating you over the head about the old 69 Mustang. This is its own unique beast, and every bit of it is high performance, which is what I really appreciate. And of course, because it's a convertible, you can drive out here in the country and have some fun, enjoy the smells and the sounds. I mean, there's really nothing like a convertible, and that's why I really love the Miata. And I've owned several Miatas, but I eventually sold them because I have two kids. I have a family of four. I, I you know, always had to leave somebody behind. But with this, 
I could bring the whole family with me. That is something that's very often overlooked when thinking about a convertible, you know? Miata is usually the answer, according to online. But when it comes down to reality, if you have a family, I think the Mustang convertible is the answer. And this high performance pack, man, it is just fantastic. And it's not just the looks and it's not just the performance. They really nailed a lot of the details. Everything from like this just the shifter that feels so good, the clutch pedal that is the right amount of travel, and even, you know, including a performance rear differential so you get good hookup on those launches. These are all very important things. So you can also get a higher performance version of the 2.3 liter turbo. Uh, even more high performance than this one. However, that is only available on the Coupe Edition. And I think that actually makes sense because the Coupe Edition, you will take it to track days and that's where that little extra bit of performance will be really appreciated. But for this, this is just a fast, fun, bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a gobstopper kind of just throw it all out and just have some fun with it kind of car. Whereas, you know, if you want to go, you know, track day because you need a top, you want to go with the coupe. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh, that little crackle at the end, so cool. But do you know what does that crackle even better? The 2020 Ford Mustang Bullet. This is an homage to the 1968 film car, but thoroughly modern and exciting in its own right. It's basically a premium GT with some motor enhancements and without paying for the price of a Shelby. To be completely straightforward, if I was buying a performance car right now, this is the one I would buy. It sounds great, looks amazing, and drives even better. Under the hood is the legendary 5.0 Coyote V8, putting out 480 horsepower. The rest of the car is based on a GT Premium with track-ready suspension, rear differential, and brakes. Believe it or not, the Bullet is actually in the mid-range of the Mustang price chart, with Ford asking around $47,000. Add in the MagnaRide adaptive suspension, and you're looking at a price out the door of around $53,000 US dollars. Considering the extra performance you get with a GT, which is also available as a convertible, and the exclusivity of a Bullet, which is fastback only, is there really any reason to still consider the 2.3 liter high performance model in either convertible or hardtop trims? I think there is. And the most obvious reason is price. The 2.5 liter EcoBoost high performance model has a lot of the GT's performance in a package that is still very fun to drive and still plenty fast for off the track. You also get better economy than the V8, up to five more miles to the gallon, but are you really gonna drive it enough for that economy differential to matter? That depends on your own situation. If this is your one and only car, the 2.3 liter EcoBoost high performance is the way to go in either convertible or fastback trims. If it's just a weekend plaything, I would suggest going all the way and getting the real deal. And that is a GT, preferably the Bullet. What would you get? The high performance 2.3 with the turbo? Or do you really think, you know, it's GT or nothing? Post a comment below. Also, be sure to hit subscribe and like. We really need that to help power our channel. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching.